My mother-in-law crossed every line after she tried to take my son. We're filing a restraining of order. My name is Sasha, 35F, and my husband, Richard, 39, and I have a son named Oliver, 4M. And my mother-in-law, Brenda, 67F, has made such a weird demand out of me that I don't even know how to react. I let me back a bit and tell you about our family dynamics. I've always been a working woman, and my mother-in-law, Brenda, has always had a problem with that. Now, the thing is, my husband has his own successful business and is more than capable of being the sole earner of the family. However, I also love my job and the financial security that comes with it, so I never wanted to give it up. But Brenda, being the traditional woman she is, has always tried to push me to quit my job. One of the first major instances was when we had Thanksgiving dinner a few years ago. Um, we were all sitting around the table and the conversation shifted to everyone's careers. I mentioned a big project I was working on and how excited I was about it. Brenda looked at me with this disapproving stare and said, you know, dear, you don't have to work if you don't want to. I too what? Your husband provides very well for the family. It's not too late to be more involved at home. It was like she completely dismissed my career and the passion I have for it. Then, there was the time we were at a family gathering for my husband's birthday. Brenda made a big deal about how she was so proud of her son for being such a successful businessman. Then she turned to me and said, I hope you realize how lucky you are to have such a supportive husband. Maybe it's time you considered focusing more on being a homemaker. It's important for families to have that balance. The way she said it made me feel like my role and contributions at work were somehow less valuable. Another instance was during a summer barbecue. I was talking about an upcoming promotion I was up for and how excited I was to take on new challenges at work. Brenda didn't say much at first, but later, while we were clearing the table, she pulled me aside and said, you know, working so hard might not be the best thing. You should think about what's truly important being there for your family. A job can be replaced, but family is forever. It felt like a subtle jab, implying that my dedication to my career was somehow harming my family, which was frustrating and disheartening. The most recent instance was during our Christmas family dinner. I was discussing how I had been working late nights to meet a deadline, and how proud I was of the progress I was making. Brenda, in her usual fashion, sighed and said, you really should think about scaling back. Your husband and I both think you're working too hard. It's time to enjoy life more and focus on what truly matters. It's like she's always trying to convince me that my career is a burden, and I should be content with just being at home. In every one of these situations, Brenda's comments seem to reflect her own beliefs about traditional gender roles and what she thinks a woman's place should be. So I just thought she's suggesting I quit my job it's the way she makes me feel as though my ambitions and career are somehow less important than conforming to her ideals. I've tried to explain my perspective to her that my job is not just a source of income, but also a part of who I am and something that brings me fulfillment. But every time she just waves it off, saying things like, well, everyone has their own priorities with this undertone that implies mine are misplaced. Things changed a lot when I got pregnant with Oliver. Brenda had this assumption that as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I'd automatically quit my job and embrace the role of a stay-at-home mom. She seemed to have this vision in her head of what motherhood should look like, and it definitely didn't include a pregnant woman working. When I was around six months pregnant, I was still working full-time, and that's when Brenda's pressure really started to ramp up. One day, she came over to visit and noticed I was still working on a project from home. She immediately started in on me with, you know, dear, it's really important to take it easy now that you're so far along. You should think about quitting your job. It's better for both you and the baby. Her tone was so insistent, it felt like she was almost trying to dictate my life decisions. Another instance was when I was at her house for a family dinner. I was tired and in the middle of preparing a presentation for work, and she saw me struggling to balance everything. She looked at me with a concerned expression and said, Honey, you're about to become a mother. It's time to think about what's best for your child. Working while pregnant is one thing, but you should really consider taking a break and focusing on your family. It's what's best for everyone. Her pressure wasn't just verbal. It also felt like she was trying to undermine my choices by always suggesting that my job was secondary to being a mother. During another visit, she gave me a stack of brochures for parenting classes and said, I've signed up for a few of these myself. I think you'd benefit from them, and it might give you a chance to think about taking some time off work. She acted like she was being helpful, but it felt like another way to push me towards quitting my job. One particularly frustrating moment was during a weekend family gathering. I was at a point where I had a lot of deadlines and was feeling pretty overwhelmed. Brenda took one look at me and said, you know, you're working so hard. You should be at home, resting and preparing for motherhood. It was as if she couldn't grasp that I was handling things just fine, and that my work was also a significant part of my life. Even when we had a heart-to-heart-to-heart -to -heart -to -heart about how I planned to balance work and motherhood, Brenda seemed to have her own agenda. I told her that I intended to take maternity leave and then return to work part-time. She looked at me with disbelief and disapproval and said, You know, it's great that you're planning to return but I really think it's important for you to prioritize being home with the baby. There's no substitute for a mother's presence. It felt like she couldn't accept that my choice to work part-time 
wasn't an attempt to neglect my role as a mother, but rather a way to balance both my career and my family. After Oliver was born, I was on maternity leave, and as I'd always planned, I was getting ready to return to work. Brenda, on the other hand, seemed to take this as a golden opportunity to insert herself into every aspect of my life. She started coming over more frequently, not to offer help but to critique and comment on everything I was doing. One instance that really stands out is when she showed up unexpectedly one afternoon while I was trying to get Oliver into a nap routine. I was already exhausted from the sleepless nights and trying to figure out a schedule that worked for both me and the baby. Brenda walked in and immediately started inspecting the nursery. She looked around, raised an eyebrow, and said, You know, I read that babies sleep better in a room that's kept a bit cooler. You should think about adjusting the temperature. It felt like she was undermining every choice I'd made about Oliver's care, and it was incredibly disheartening. Then there was the time she came over while I was trying to manage Oliver's feeding schedule. I was pumping and feeding him from a bottle, and Brenda decided it was the perfect moment to discuss the benefits of direct breastfeeding and tell me how it is better for kids. Now some of you might think that she was just trying to give Oliver the best. But the truth is that she always said things in such a condescending tone that would boil my blood. The situation got even more overwhelming when she started coming over during my work hours. I had a few meetings lined up and was trying to balance working from home while also caring for Oliver. Brenda would just pop in and start rearranging things or giving unsolicited advice on how I should manage my time. So one day, I was in the middle of a Zoom call with a client, and Brenda barged into the room, asking something that I didn't even remember at the moment. It was incredibly distracting and made it hard to focus on my work. Richard and I had a serious talk about how to handle the situation. We were both feeling frustrated with Brenda's constant intrusion and her habit of critiquing our parenting choices. We decided it was time to set some boundaries. Richard called Brenda to discuss it, and we had her over for a sit-down meeting at our house. We were calm but firm, explaining that while we appreciated her concern and advice, we needed her to respect our decisions and give us space to figure things out on our own. Brenda was surprised and defensive. She initially protested, saying things like, I'm only trying to help. I just want what's best for Oliver. It was clear that she didn't fully understand how her actions were impacting us. She seemed to take our request as a personal rejection rather than a necessary step for us to establish our own parenting style. I was relieved because I knew we had to draw the line and establish some boundaries for our own well-being and for the health of our family dynamic. At the same time, I felt guilty because I knew Brenda meant well, even if her methods were overwhelming and intrusive. It was tough to balance standing up for our own choices with the desire to maintain a good relationship with her. After the conversation, Brenda's visits became less frequent, and she started to respect the boundaries we'd set. However, there was still a noticeable shift in our relationship. She seemed a bit distant and hurt, which was hard to navigate but at least the constant pressure and critique had eased. After some time, I went back to the office, and Richard and I did everything we could to ensure Oliver was well taken care of. So we hired a nanny, found a great daycare, and made sure to spend as much quality time with Oliver as we could. Despite our best efforts, Brenda didn't completely let go of her critical attitude. Every so often, she would drop these snide comments that really got under my skin. One day, we were hosting a small family lunch, and I was talking about how great our nanny was and how well Oliver was adjusting to the daycare. Brenda took a sip of her coffee, looked at me with this almost pitying expression, and said, Well, at least Oliver's in good hands during the day. I just hope he's not missing out on too much of his parents' time. Her tone was so condescending as if implying that we weren't doing enough for our child. It was incredibly frustrating because she wasn't seeing the full picture of how much effort we were putting in. There was also the occasion when we were having dinner with Brenda, and she brought up a recent milestone that Oliver had achieved at daycare. She said, Oh, that's nice to hear. I just hope you're not letting someone else do all the important stuff while you're at work. It was one of those moments where her comment felt like a direct attack on our parenting choices, even though she tried to mask it as a concern. The most frustrating instance was during one of her surprise visits. She showed up unannounced while we were getting ready for an evening out. So we had hired a babysitter for the night, and Brenda noticed Oliver was getting settled with the sitter. She said, I guess it's nice that you get a break every now and then. Just remember, the best memories are made when parents are fully present. Her comments made me feel like we were failing in, in some way, even though we were doing our best to ensure Oliver was loved and cared for. I started to get used to brushing off these comments, but they still stung every time. So it was hard not to feel defensive when it seemed like Brenda was constantly questioning our choices and implying that we weren't giving Oliver the attention he deserved. I knew deep down that we were doing everything we could to provide a loving environment for him. But Brenda's snide remarks made me second-guess ourselves more often than I would have liked. However, for the past few months, Brenda has been on overdrive with her critiques about how we're supposedly ignoring Oliver's needs. It's been incredibly hard to set boundaries with her, and her comments have been getting more and more intense. The worst was when she flat out told me that I either needed to become a stay-at-home mom or hand Oliver over to my sister-in-law, Rebecca, 31F. I was absolutely shocked at what she was suggesting. Brenda's argument was that, 
since Oliver spends some of his time with the nanny while Richard and I are at work, we might as well just let Rebecca take care of him. She said, you know, since you're clearly so busy with your job, maybe you should consider having Rebecca look after Oliver full time. That way he'd have constant care and you wouldn't have to worry about it. I was dumbfounded. It felt like she was dismissing all the effort we'd put into finding a good balance and assuming that anyone else could just step in and do a better job. When I heard that suggestion, I was livid. I told her outright that she was crazy for even suggesting it. I said, Brenda, that's not a solution. I am not just going to hand Oliver over to Rebecca like he's some sort of burden. We have a plan that works for us, and I'm not going to let you dictate what's best for our child. I was shaking with anger, feeling completely overwhelmed by her lack of respect for our choices and her need to control the situation. Brenda's response was even more infuriating. She said, well, you know that Rebecca is infertile and you're already handing him over to the nanny during the day. It's not like you're there with him all the time anyway. At least with Rebecca, he'd have family around him, and not just a hired caregiver. To top it off, she had the nerve to accuse me of being ungrateful and a bad mom for choosing to continue working. She said, You're so focused on your career that you're forgetting what's really important. A mother's place is at home with her child, and you're not being fair to Oliver. Richard was equally flabbergasted by Brenda's suggestions. When I relayed the conversation to him, he was furious. So we both agreed that Brenda had crossed a line, and it was time to put a firm stop to her interference. So Richard took it upon himself to address the situation directly. He told her, Brenda, we've heard enough. Your constant criticism and suggestions are out of line. We've made decisions about our family that work for us, and we don't need you dictating how we should raise our child. We've set boundaries, and you need to respect them. Richard's words were firm and clear, but I could see Brenda was hurt and defensive. She tried to argue that she was only trying to help and that her intentions were good, but we made it clear that her help was neither needed nor wanted in this matter. We told her that her suggestions were not only inappropriate, but also undermined the careful balance we'd worked hard to achieve. We made it clear that we would not tolerate any further discussions on this topic, and that she should never bring it up again. Things calmed down for a bit after our confrontation with Brenda. I thought maybe she had finally gotten the message and would back off. That was until one Tuesday when I had a major scare. I texted our nanny to check in on how Oliver was doing, and her response completely threw me off. She told me that Brenda had shown up unexpectedly, said she'd take over, and instructed the nanny to leave. I was shocked and instantly worried. I tried calling Brenda right away, but she didn't pick up. My heart was racing as I grabbed my things and left the office to head home. I couldn't shake the feeling of panic as I made my way back. When I arrived at our house, I noticed the main door was unlocked. I called out for Oliver and Brenda, but there was no response. My anxiety spiked as I rushed inside. I went straight to Oliver's room, and what I saw there made my blood boil. Brenda was in the middle of packing Oliver's things into a bag. She looked up, startled, as I burst through the door. I demanded to know what she was doing, and at first, she tried to play it cool, saying, Oh, I'm just helping out. I was just organizing his things. I was furious, and my mind was racing with anger. Helping out? You've got to be kidding me, I snapped. You don't just show up and take my child without even asking me. What the hell do you think you're doing? When Brenda realized I wasn't going to let her off the hook, she admitted that she intended to take Oliver to Rebecca's place. I just thought it would be best for Oliver to be with family, she said. He needs more attention and stability, and since you're so busy, Rebecca can give him that. I was so enraged that I felt like I couldn't think straight. My blood was boiling, and I felt like I was about to explode. No, I said firmly, get out. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. You have no right to make these decisions for us or for Oliver. I wasn't going to tolerate any more of Brenda's overstepping especially when it came to my child's well-being. I grabbed the packed bag from her hands and told her to leave the house immediately. Her face was a mix of shock and hurt, but I was beyond caring. I couldn't believe she had the audacity to come into our home, disregard our boundaries, and try to take Oliver away without even discussing it with us first. And it was a complete violation of our trust and our parenting decisions. As Brenda left, she tried to apologize and explain that she only wanted what was best for Oliver. But I wasn't interested in hearing her justifications. I needed to make it clear that she had crossed a line, and this kind of behavior was completely unacceptable. I made it clear that any future interventions or unsolicited decisions about Oliver's care would not be tolerated. I immediately called Richard to let him know what had happened. He was as shocked as I was and agreed that Brenda had seriously overstepped. So we both knew that we needed to set even firmer boundaries moving forward. Richard and I spent the rest of the evening calming down and discussing how to handle the situation. So we decided that it was time to have another serious conversation with Brenda this time with the goal of establishing clear, non-negotiable boundaries regarding her involvement in our family life. That evening, we headed over to Brenda's house. We were both seething, and Richard was especially adamant that we needed to make a strong statement. So when we arrived, we laid it all out for Brenda. We told her that this was the last straw. She had crossed a major line, and we were seriously considering pressing charges against her. So we didn't even know if we had enough grounds to do it, 
but we wanted her to know that we were prepared to go all the way if necessary. We also mentioned that we had security cameras installed at our house, including in the rooms where she'd been caught trying to take Oliver. We said, we have video evidence of you trying to take Oliver. This is serious, and we won't just let it slide. And honestly, we were hoping that this threat would be enough to scare her into backing off without us actually needing to involve the authorities. Brenda's reaction was immediate and desperate. She started begging us not to press charges, pleading with us to reconsider. She kept saying things like, I didn't mean to overstep. I just want what's best for Oliver. Please don't do this. It was clear that she was scared and finally realized the severity of her actions. So we told her flat out that if she wanted to avoid any legal trouble, she needed to stay away from us and our family. So we emphasized that we would not tolerate any more interference or unsolicited advice about how we should raise our son. If you care about our relationship at all, Richard said, you'll respect our boundaries from now on and stay out of our lives. After laying down the law, we left her house. The whole ordeal was exhausting, and I couldn't help but feel conflicted. The part of me felt like maybe we'd let her off too easy, especially considering the gravity of what she tried to do. But it was a tough call, and while the immediate threat was dealt with, I still worried about ensuring that Brenda wouldn't try to cross any more boundaries in the future. For now, it might be best to limit or even cut off contact with Brenda for a while. So this would give us time to establish our boundaries clearly and give Brenda a chance to understand the seriousness of our demands. I'd love to hear any additional suggestions or advice from anyone who has been in a similar situation. It's important to me that I'm doing everything possible to protect my son and ensure that our family can move forward without further issues. Update 1 After everything that had happened with Brenda, I thought I'd finally caught a break. But then, a few days later, I received a call from Rebecca. She asked if we could meet, and since I was still reeling from the whole situation, I agreed. She came over to our house the same day, and I was bracing myself for whatever might come next. When Rebecca arrived, she was clearly upset. She explained that she had found out what had happened and was really angry herself. She told me that Brenda had been lying to her, claiming that I was overwhelmed with work and wanted to hand over Oliver to her. Brenda had painted a completely false picture of the situation. Rebecca was furious when she learned the truth, because Brenda had also told her that I didn't want to deal with Oliver and that I was embarrassed about failing as a mother. It was all a twisted manipulation to justify Brenda's own actions. So Rebecca's anger was palpable as she shared how Brenda had been criticizing me and manipulating her own daughter. She said, I had no idea Brenda was saying these things about you. She told me you were struggling and that you were too embarrassed to admit it. I thought you were actually okay with the idea of Oliver staying with me. I was livid hearing this. So Brenda's deceit was far worse than I had imagined. Not only had she tried to take Oliver from us, but she had also been actively spreading lies and manipulating Rebecca to support her actions. It was a huge betrayal, not just to me, but to Rebecca as well. Rebecca went on to explain that she and her partner had been trying to have a child for the past five years without success. This situation had left her feeling particularly vulnerable and caught up in Brenda's scheme. She said, I would never have tried to step in like this if I'd known the real situation. So it hurt me to think that Brenda might have used my own hopes and struggles against you. The hearing Rebecca's side of the story made me realize how deep Brenda's manipulation had gone. I was relieved that Rebecca wasn't part of the scheme willingly, but sad that Brenda had caused so much unnecessary pain. I told Rebecca that we were both victims of Brenda's deceit and that there was no reason for her to feel guilty. It's not your fault, I said. Brenda has been crossing boundaries and manipulating everyone around her. You were misled and I'm sorry you had to be caught up in this mess. Rebecca was grateful for my understanding and apologized for any confusion or hurt caused. Bye. When we talked about how we could move forward from here. I assured her that I valued our relationship and that we needed to keep communication open to avoid any more misunderstandings. We both agreed that Brenda had to be the focal point of our concerns right now and that we needed to support each other to deal with her. In the aftermath of the meeting with Rebecca, I felt a bit of weight lift off my shoulders. At least now, Rebecca and I were on the same page and I no longer had to worry about Brenda's manipulation affecting our relationship. I felt more determined than ever to keep our family's boundaries strong and to protect Oliver from any further interference. Update 2, Brenda has crossed all lines. It's been two weeks since I last posted here, hoping things would settle down, but they haven't. In fact, they've gotten even worse. Yesterday, I went to pick up Oliver from his daycare, and to my shock, they told me he had already been picked up. I asked them who had taken him, and they casually mentioned that his grandma had come by. Brenda used to pick Oliver up before everything went down, so the daycare staff didn't think twice when she showed up again. So I was livid. I told them to never let this happen again and stormed out of the center. I called Brenda immediately, and to my surprise, she actually answered. I demanded to know where she was and where my son was. She answered nonchalantly that she just missed Oliver and had picked him up to spend some time with him. She said she was at her house. I was beyond furious. I ended the call and drove straight to her place. So when I arrived, Brenda was in her living room sitting comfortably with Oliver playing nearby. I didn't waste any time. I grabbed Oliver and put him in the car, all while trying to keep my composure. I told Brenda bluntly that this was the final straw. 
I made it clear that we were done with her interfering in our lives and that she was never to see her grandchild again. Brenda tried to protest, saying she didn't mean to cause any worry and was just trying to be a loving grandmother. I didn't want to hear any more excuses. I told her that I didn't care about her intentions and that we would be filing for a restraining order. Now, a restraint, there is John Sumner with a restraining order, a South Bitter's name point. I dare stay you we not for, and I don't want to hurry Limbor. Her face fell and she looked genuinely hurt, but I was done with her manipulative behavior. I left her house without another word. When Richard came home later that evening, I filled him in on what had happened. He was as outraged as I was and agreed that we needed to take serious legal action. We both felt that Brenda's audacity was escalating, and it was clear that she wasn't going to respect our boundaries unless there were real consequences. Richard suggested we definitely seek legal counsel and look into filing a restraining order as soon as possible. It's been incredibly draining dealing with Brenda's constant interference. Her actions have made it clear that she's unwilling to respect our family's boundaries without some form of legal deterrent. It's frustrating to have to take such drastic measures, but we both agree that it's necessary to protect our family and ensure that Brenda stops trying to control our lives. We're now in the process of finding a lawyer who can guide us through filing for a restraining order. We want to make sure that we're taking all the right steps to keep Brenda away and protect Oliver from any further attempts at manipulation or interference. The whole situation has made me feel like I'm constantly on edge, and it's hard to find any peace of mind knowing that Brenda might try something else. Update 3 Hi Everyone I wanted to give you all a quick update and let you know how things are going. First off, a huge thank you for all the support and advice you've shared. It's been really helpful during this stressful time. So, we've decided to move forward with filing a restraining order against Brenda. We're currently working with a lawyer to get everything in place. It's a bit of a process, but we're making progress. We want to make sure that we're taking all the necessary steps to protect our family and to send a clear message that Brenda's behavior is unacceptable. In the meantime, we're being extra vigilant. Brenda has been relentless with her attempts to reach out. She's been texting and calling, sending long apologies, angry rants, and everything in between. It's honestly exhausting dealing with her constant messages. Some of them are pleading for forgiveness, while others are accusatory, blaming us for the situation. This will be my last update on this situation for now. I'm hoping that the restraining order will help us finally put an end to Brenda's interference and allow us to move forward. I appreciate all the kind words and advice you've given. It's made a big difference in how we're handling things and... 